This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Sagar Gobel. He is the chairman and CEO of Semtrex. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is CETX on NASDAQ. Sagar, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Pleasure to be here. I'm doing well. How about you? I can't complain. You know, I try to, and, uh, and I can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good. So uh, I, I want to get started here with a, with a quick overview and, back, and, and history of the company, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, yeah, and appreciate you, uh, you, know, you having us on today. So uh, Semtrex, our symbol is uh, CETX. Uh, we're a technology company that's uh, delivering innovative solutions in a couple of different uh, really exciting markets right now. Um, the, the company started over 15 years ago, and uh, we've evolved from uh, an electronics manufacturing service provider to a company that's building our own technology, uh, both on the hardware and software sides now. So uh, we're really just focused uh, entirely on building our own technologies uh, you know, on a, on a go-forward basis. Um, and the three areas that we're focused on are uh, IoT, uh, Internet of Things, um, augmented reality and virtual reality, AR, VR, and uh, uh, computer vision leveraging artificial intelligence, uh, and really specifically for the security uh, industry. Uh, so those are the, the key markets that we're focused on, and uh, we have a lot of really exciting things going on in the space, and that's uh, um, a lot to look forward to, I think. Absolutely. So I know uh, when I first saw the company do a presentation at, at all the many financial conferences we, we, we've gone to over the years. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like the company has done a sort of a pivot because I, I remember you guys were mostly focused on the manufacturing side for other companies and, and, and doing that. But it sounds like now you're starting to develop your own technology in-house to sell. Is that, is that what I'm gathering? Yeah, that's right. So uh, the challenge that we found in that business of uh, manufacturing products for other people was that, uh, you know, the um, the value that we were providing to the customers was limited. And, um, you know, our ability to grow was entirely married with our customer success. So if they're, uh, you know, they could build, be building really fantastic products, but if they were facing uh, challenges in the market, uh, then, you know, we in turn face those challenges themselves. And then um, the additional value that we could provide to uh, customers was limited. And uh, by really developing uh, products that touch our end customers, you know, we take control over that and we just kind of move up the value chain. So we leverage a lot of our experience from electronics manufacturing, apply that to um, how we build and design hardware. And then we acquired a, a software development shop uh, so now we have the best of both worlds in house, and we're able to really uh, churn out great technology uh, that's that we can call our own. So that's that's been what we've changed over the last uh, couple of years. And I know this might seem obvious to some, but for those who may not be familiar with the main verticals that you're going after now, why why those in particular? So um, these industries, I think, are really in their nascent stages. So. Um, there's a tremendous amount, IoT is fully enabled by connected devices. So the way uh, different hardware can communicate with each other is, is sort of this new idea, right? So um, now that, you know, everything from your thermostat to your refrigerator, your car, everything is all connected. And uh, that just has so many implications for what you can do from creating really uh, uh, attractive and compelling customer value. So, so that's exciting. And then, I mean, AR and VR, I mean, I don't know if you've tried uh, any of the VR headsets like an Oculus Quest, but uh, I, you know, I think, you know, if we think COVID-19 has changed the way we've worked, you know, just wait six, seven years until VR headsets get really mainstream. And, uh, and, you know, I think people really wonder why do they go to the office anymore? So I think we're on the verge of an entirely new computer revolution with um, the way things are going with virtual reality. Uh, and so, uh, it, and it has implications for every industry from real estate. I mean, could you imagine buying your next home entirely virtually from your couch or, uh, you know, if you want to go, uh, shoe shopping, I mean, you can see the shoes on your feet in a headset, you, you know, I mean, you can, you can go to school virtually. I mean, so it's the entire experience will transform the way we live, I think. And, um, and then on the, on, on the last segment that we're focused on is uh, artificial intelligence and specifically computer vision. So, uh, and this area, 
you know, we acquired a business called Vicon Industries, which had been around uh, for 50 years, and they're a real pioneer in the security space. And, um, you know, security intelligence is becoming more and more intelligent. And that's really where, you know, right now the, the industry is kind of antiquated, where you have um, human uh, security guards that are looking at video footage, and, um, you know, they have to make determinations about what's a threat. Um, and there's a lot of human error involved, right? So, you know, over the next 10 years, we're going to see, and, and this process has already started um, with like autonomous vehicles and stuff, where computers historically have been very bad at um, seeing things. You know, it's very difficult for computers to detect objects to determine, you know, this is a human and this is a, a you know, an animal or, and, and that's going to really change over the next 10 years because of computing processing powers and so forth. So there's a lot of changes that are really ripe for disruption in that space, and we're kind of going right at it. Um, and I think over the next 10 years, um, there'll be a big shift towards analytics and autonomous, you know, computer detection of all kinds of security threats. And um, in the dangerous world we live in today, I think that's more valuable than ever um, to really have uh, the best security technology possible. Got it. So what would you say then makes the company unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? Well, so I think uh, across the board, uh, you know, our, our uh, inherent uh, capabilities within hardware and software development are very unique um, because of our experience. Um, we also have, uh, we have about, I would say over a hundred software developers. A lot of them are in India and that means dollar for dollar we can, um, outbuild any software um, against anybody in the world and um, at a competitive cost advantage. And I think that gives us a leg up. So, uh, so that's just, you know, one competitive advantage um, just that sets the stage for us. But um, it, within our IOT segment, for instance, we built the smart desk. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it the last time we were at a conference with the product, uh, but it's really a reinvention of the personal workspace. So we really don't have any peers in this space. A lot of people are marketing, just sit stand desks um, and things like that, like a bare desk that you put on top of your desk that goes up and down. But really the future of your workspace is more about how you integrate all of the disparate things like a telephone, a wireless charger, you know, how do your monitors, keyboard, how does that all sync together to make a really elegant experience? You know, most people have, you know, a nice car. If you have even all cars today have this nice sleek interior design and then you know, it's, you get out of your car and you go to your desk and it feels like something from the 1980s. So um, that's really what we set out to do. And I think we've delivered on that mission with the smart desk. So um, it's a truly revolutionary product. And um, later this fall, we'll be releasing the next generation of that, which enables um, docking as a primary feature. Right now, our smart desk, you know, it comes with three touchscreen monitors, uh, a sit stand desk, wireless charger, um, you know, a number of other features and, um, but it's all powered by an integrated Windows PC. So it's almost like buying um, a personal workstation. Now we have uh, enabled the ability to dock your laptop in there. And so that opens it up to both Mac users and a lot of people who were, uh, wanted this product, but they didn't want to have to buy another PC to uh, integrate it into their workflow. So it, it's been the number one requested feature since we launched the product. And so we're, you know, we're just going to deliver on that. Um, other ways that we stand out from uh, other people in the market, uh, you know, with respect to VR and AR, uh, as another example, I mean, we're the, the, the number one rated AR VR developer on clutch.com, which is a, a ranking website for digital agencies. And uh, so we have a tremendous amount of, um, capability and credibility in the market. And uh, we're one of the few companies that has a lot of experience in developing AR and VR solutions for companies. So right now this industry is very much in its early stages and we're already a pioneer. And so that gives us a leg up as we start to build out more and more experiences. And uh, so, uh, you know, we've, we have, we've built experiences for companies like Richemont for their um, subsidiaries like Mont Blanc and Panerai. Um, and, you know, we've done things for companies like VF Corp. So, so and the, the great thing about what's happening right now is that so many companies are looking at how do you take their business model from brick and mortar to sort of digital, and that's enabled through virtual reality and augmented reality. And so it kind of plays right into, you know, our credibility and experience in terms of what we're doing. Got it. 
So as we've discussed already in this interview, you know, the company operates in multiple industries and a wide range of com commercial sectors. So the company also just put out a, a business update yesterday on June 23rd. We're recording this on June 24th. Uh, yeah. Make sure, you know, clear there. Uh, can, can you describe how the company was impacted for the COVID-19 pandemic and then how the recent filings will help as it's stated in your, the press release and I quote, accelerate the release of a number of our exciting and innovative products we plan to deliver over the next 12 months, end quote. Sure, so uh, with respect to COVID-19, that, uh, you know, this virus has really uh, put the world on its end a little bit in terms of just upending um, how everybody's been operating. Fortunately for us as a tech company, we are largely uh, set up from an infrastructure point of view to operate remotely. So, um, you know, that from our customers' perspective, a lot of things really haven't changed and the entire experience has been pretty seamless. Uh, so uh, from that point of view, it's been good. I mean, naturally we've had a number of customers face enormous struggles through this. We uh, sell products to schools, universities, hospitals, government buildings. So you know, like anybody else, we've certainly experienced uh, some challenges in terms of uh, our sales and projects being delayed and so forth. But I think within all three verticals, um, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, 12 months from now, two years from now, three months from now, there is uh, enormous trend going upwards for our business. So while there might be some short term headwinds, we're pretty confident that over the next couple of quarters, things will get back to normal and, and growth will start to be there in our industries. Um, and, uh, you know, respect to the other aspect, uh, of our recent, um, offering and cash infusion, uh, you know, anytime you're building new technology, it's capital intensive, right? Research and development takes time and effort. And, and most importantly, it requires cash to, to fund those efforts. So, um, you know, some checks were a relatively small company, uh, compared to many other players in our space. And, uh, so you know, we have to be mindful of our bottom line and our cash flow, um, and we have to be limited in terms of how much resources we can put towards any specific projects. Uh, but despite that, we've been pretty successful in terms of getting products to market quickly. Uh, you know, we developed the smart desk from concept to, to market in 18 months. So it speaks to the kind of rapid pace of uh, development that we like to aspire to. But, um, you know, we raised over about $10 million in the last, uh, a uh, couple of weeks. And so that gives us an enormous amount of capital to, you know, get all of our initiatives to market on time over the next 12 months, um, ensure that we hit our timelines and have the resources necessary to do that. And uh, I would say in all three of our key verticals, AR, VR, IoT, and um, our computer vision segment, um, you know, we have a number of things that are going to be exciting product releases. So um, this cash infusion really gives us the ability to, to make sure that we hit those timelines. Absolutely. And, and I also have to ask, I mean, what, what is your background? You know, how, how'd you get involved? You're the founder as well, or did you come into the business? Yeah. So uh, the company was started uh, by my family, uh, you know, by my father and myself. Um, you know, I came in, um, I joined in 2008 and, um, you know, I started out as an engineer. I'm an engineer by background. I studied at uh, Stony Brook uh, University, and then I studied business later at, at Harvard uh, Business School. So, um, you know, I, I've had uh, that kind of training academically. And uh, so I started out as a field engineer at Semtrex, and, um, you know, we were a very small company at the time. And uh, over the last 10 years or so, through a number of um, shifts in our business and acquisitions, we've been able to get to kind of where we are today uh, in terms of our top line growth. Um, you know, over that year, we, I mean, over those years, I mean, we've grown our revenues over, um, you know, uh, a thousand percent and, you know, grown our assets by, you know, 50 million and so forth. So we've been able to accomplish a lot. We've received a number of awards. Uh, we've been on Deloitte's Fast 500 at least five times, I think, in the last 10 years. Um, so we're very excited about, or proud of our accomplishments, but, um, you know, we still believe that our best days are in front of us. And so, um, especially with the kinds of products we're starting to build now and, um, you know, the market opportunities that we see. So, so we're, we're pretty pumped. No, I like, I, I like that subtle Harvard drop there. That was, a, that was, a, that was, <laughs> that, that was subtle. Like, you know, Stony Brook and, you know, Harvard, you know, it's 
That was good. That was, that, was, that was subtle. I like that. So, 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 so then from what you can tell us, what, what would you say are the one to two things that investors should look for now moving forward? Sure. So um, I'll give you sort of one in each segment. Maybe that's the, the best way to put it. So, um, you know, I think within our uh, IoT segment, we have our uh, smart desk. Our next gen smart desk is going to be coming out uh, later this year in the fall in a couple months. Uh, so the fall is not too far away. So we're really excited about this product. I think it's going to close the gap in terms of, um, you know, we had so many Mac customers who wanted this product and uh, unfortunately it just didn't work for them. And so, uh, you know, we're really excited to kind of give uh, a lot of Mac users a smart desk now. So, um, so that's something that we're really looking forward to. Um, and uh, on the AR VR front, we have uh, our first experiential uh, game coming out next year. It's based on a popular sci-fi novel by B.B. Larson called Star Force. And uh, so that's, um, you know, our first sort of uh, segue into AR VR applications that are Semtrex's own. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. And then on the uh, artificial intelligence computer vision side, uh, you know, we'll be releasing our, uh, you know, we're building our first uh, AI enabled uh, computer vision platform to be released sometime in um, the middle of 2021. Uh, so that's another thing uh, that uh, investors can look forward to in terms of some really exciting product releases that are gonna really help us continue to get to the next level. Um, but in the short term, you know, we are uh, continuing to see uh, growing demand for our products and services. We introduced um, this thermal body camera, which allows businesses and organizations to um, help determine if patients have elevated body temperatures. You know, that would maybe indicate that they have um, a fever or are sick. Uh, and so, you know, that's something that is in the short term that we've seen a lot of interest for because of organizations that are figuring out how do I reopen but keep all the people safe in, in my uh, building or facility. Uh, so things like that, I mean, we have seen uh, the number of uh, companies requesting AR and VR services to turn their business from a brick and mortar uh, to digital it has, is just unprecedented. So, uh, so we're also really excited about that. We have, we're working on a number of opportunities right now where organizations that put on large scale events are sort of scratching their head and saying, okay, you know, we want to do this event where we had, you know, 100,000 people coming, you know, in person, how do we make this a digital experience? And so we're working with these organizations to think that through and hopefully deliver on a virtual experience. So um, I'd say in the short term, a lot of things to be, exci be excited about. And then, you know, we have a number of these critical product releases that are going to happen over the next 12 months. So um, so all of that we feel is going to help us continue to drive top line growth over the next couple of years. Got it. And then we're, we're, we're there. So wh where can my audience go and find more information about Semtrex? And are you, are you still on Twitter? You still, you still have your own account? I do. I, I am on Twitter. I'm not that active. Um, but, uh, you know, so, but the best place to find us is uh, Semtrex.com. That's C-E-M-T-R-E-X.com. Our ticker symbol is uh, CETX, um, and I would say, you know, for that, uh, for our, for the audience, that's really the best place to start uh, finding information about the company and our, our products and services. Perfect. Well, Sagar, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe, and I look forward to our next update. Yeah, likewise, uh, Robert. I really appreciate your time here. Thanks. Thank you.